now we've been talking about specific structural regions and what uh, brain functions are associated with those structural regions. But there are many different functional brain systems that aren't localized to one specific structure or one particular area of the brain. These are going to be networks of neurons. There are spot span wide areas of the brain. Uh, there are more than this, but we're going to look at two of them, the limbic system and the reticular formation. So the limbic system is, has structures on the medial aspects of the cerebral hemispheres in the diencephalon. There's a structure called the fornix, which is a fiber tract that's going to link the limbic system regions. Uh, includes part of the diencephalon, some cerebral structures that are encircling the brain stem. It's a large part of our emotional or affect, affective brain. Uh, some structures here would include the amygdaloid body, which we know from pathology uh, and imaging, is involved in recognizing angry or fearful facial expressions. Uh, it's, we use it to assess danger, it helps to elicit a fear response. The cingulate gyrus has a role in expressing emotions through our gestures and helps us to resolve mental conflicts. So here is a kind of a broad picture of the limbic system. It puts emotional responses to odors. Uh, it makes uh, the, the limbic system is why we think skunk odor is bad. It's most, most of its output is relayed through the hypothalamus, uh, and the hypothalamus uh, has a role in psychosomatic illnesses. It interacts with the prefrontal lobes, helping us to react emotionally to things we consciously understand happening. Uh, it makes us consciously aware of the emotional richness in our lives. The hippocampus and the amygdaloid body also play a role in memory. The other one is the reticular formation. The reticular formation extends through the central core of the brain. It's got three broad columns that run the length of the brain stem. They are the raphe nuclei, the medial group of nuclei, and the lateral group of nuclei. The medial ones are also called large cell and the lateral small cell. It has axonal projections. Uh, throughout the hypothalamus, the thalamus, the cerebral cortex, the cerebellum, and the spinal cord. Uh, and all of those connections allow it to govern the arousal state of the brain. It involves the reticular activating system, and that sends impulses to the cerebral cortex to keep it conscious and alert. Helps to filter out repetitive, familiar, or weak stimuli. In fact, most all of the stimuli that we are receiving, about 99% of it, is never sent to our consciousness. The reticular activating system is inhibited by sleep centers, alcohol, and other drugs. And if you get a severe injury to the reticular activating system, you can get a permanent unconsciousness, which we refer to as a coma. There are motor functions of the reticular formation that help control coarse limb movements, uh, working through reticulospinal tracts. Uh, there are reticular autonomic centers that regulate some visceral motor functions. There are vasomotor centers, cardiac centers, respiratory center. So here is a broad drawing of the reticular formation, starting here and projecting throughout the brain to control numerous things. So if we review what we've done so far, we'll talk, talk first about the cerebral hemispheres, including the cortical gray matter and the basal nuclei. From there, we went to the thalamus, the hypothalamus. And below that, the uh, uh, link closely to that is the limbic system. And then the midbrain, the pons, the medulla oblongata, and then our reticular activating system, uh, giving us the major regions and functional groups of the brain. Uh, oh, I almost left off the cerebellum. 